Hello friends, what we are going to learn today is packaging of DNA. One of the most important topic in molecular biology. When you talk about DNA, the length of the DNA is 2.2 meter, while the size of nucleus is 10 raised to minus 6 meter. So such a huge DNA has to be packed in the nucleus. Therefore, DNA undergoes super coiling so as to fit in the nucleus. So the diameter of DNA we should know it is somewhere around 20 Armstrong or it is 2 nanometer. The DNA is negatively charged. Why? Because of phosphate group PO43 minus. We need to understand one important protein that is called as histone. So histone protein they are basically an octamer arranged in the order of 2 into 4. So which are those 4 proteins? H2A, H2B, H3, H4. What is the charge of histone? Histone is positively charged due to amino acids like lysine and arginine. Lysine and arginine they are basic amino acids. So let's look at the structure how the histone will look alike. So what I will be doing, I will draw four circles for you. Each circle represent one histone and then make it double. So it is H2A, H2B, H3, H4. Same thing again H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. Now whenever I will be showing you this, I will be representing my small sphere. So what happens on this histone, the DNA is going to coil. The DNA will make a turn on histone protein. Since DNA is negatively charged, it can easily attach to the histone of being positive charged. The most important part, when the DNA is coiling on histone, we need to understand that it makes one complete turn, but second turn is only three-fourths. So we say 1 3 4 turn on the histone. There is one special protein which I am drawing. It is called as linker DNA or it is also called as H1 histone. What is the role of linker? It helps in the coiling of the nucleosome. When you look at this one structure, it is called as nucleosome. This nucleosome is a 200 base pair long and it consists of two parts core DNA and H1 or linker DNA. Core DNA is 146 base pair and linker DNA is 54 base pair. When you total it up, it comes to 200 base pair. It somewhat resembles a structure like beads on string that is nucleosome fiber and it condenses to 10 nanometer. This nucleosome fiber undergoes further condensation to form a structure that is called as solenoid fiber. Solenoid we all know it is somewhat spring like structure and this solenoid fiber will condense to 30 nanometer. Now the solenoid fiber this is all DNA and the histone proteins on it. When this solenoid fiber condenses it forms chromatin fiber. What we need to understand here the condensation of solenoid fiber leads to the formation of chromatin fiber which is somewhere around 200 nanometer. When we talk about chromatin fiber, when you draw the structure, somewhere it is highly coiled, somewhere it is loosely coiled, like this the structure is formed. Highly coiled we call it as heterochromatin and loosely coiled is called as U chromatin. So this is how chromatin fiber looks alike. But we have two important words here. One is called as heterochromatin, another one is U chromatin. So friends, let's understand the distinguish between U chromatin and heterochromatin. When I use the word U chromatin, it's very simple that U means true. So U chromatin they are called as 
true chromatin but when you talk about heterochromatin they can be called as false chromatin when you talk about euchromatin they are genetically active means they are functional when we talk about heterochromatin they are genetically inactive euchromatin as you can see in the diagram they are loosely coiled but the heterochromatin is tightly coiled or we can say densely packed the euchromatin takes light stain where the heterochromatin it takes dark stain when we look at the entire dna 30% of the total dna is euchromatin and 70% of total dna is heterochromatin which is also called as junk dna when you talk about chromatin fiber now it condenses so chromatin material basically condenses to form chromatid fiber which is somewhere around 700 700 nanometer is the chromatid fiber now when you study the structure of chromatid we all know it is somewhat like this but when we draw in the condensed form it appears something like this the two chromatid fiber they join together at a point and that point we call it as centromere one of the most important point that helps in the attachment to this spindle fiber so we say that the two chromatid joins to form chromosome so 700 one chromatid 700 another chromatid together joins to form chromosome which is totaled up to 1400 nanometer what we need to understand here till packaging of chromatin material histone protein is required but after the packaging of chromatin that is chromatid and chromosome we require non histone protein or it is also called as non histone chromosomal protein when we talk about dna let's recap the module dna 2 nanometer which condenses to form nucleosome fiber nucleosome fiber further condenses to form solenoid fiber solenoid fiber further condenses to form chromatin fiber this chromatin fiber further condenses and forms chromatid chromatid further condenses or joins to form chromosome so let's look at the size when you talk about dna it is 2 nanometer nucleosome fiber 10 nanometer solenoid fiber 30 nanometer chromatid fiber 200 nanometer chromatin 200 nanometer chromatid is 700 nanometer and chromosome is 1400 nanometer so this is how the dna undergo super coiling so as to fit in the nucleus so hope you have understood the concept of packaging of dna friends and if you have understood give a like to the video your like motivates me to make more such easy videos for you thank you very much